Hello and welcome to 18 Lilliput. So this game is a, hmm, what do you describe it as? It's an 18xx card game. That's probably the best way I put it. And uh, for those of you who know what 18xx games are, or maybe watch my 18OE videos, this will look very familiar to you. If you've never played an 18xx game, uh, some of this might be a little confusing. And so my, my largest challenge is, do I approach this from the perspective that you've never seen an 18xx game before, which means I have to slow down and explain a lot more, or do I approach it from a perspective where you have seen an 18xx game? And so I'm going to try to meet some happy middle ground, but um, basically this is a game where you're going to own shares of stock, and you're competing with other people who own shares of stock, and you're going to lay track, uh, own companies, and run your trains, and make the most money. So uh, if you're an 18xx player, obviously none of that's new. But uh, uh, they consolidated this into a card game. I did get to play it multiplayer uh, last weekend, and um, I enjoyed it. Uh, did I enjoy it as much as an 18xx game? Uh, no, I did not. However, we played this in like an hour, maybe a little over with teaching, and... I've never played an 18x game that can be done in like four hours. <laughs> so um, so it was much, much quicker. And I've also had, uh, I've played other 18xx style games like Trick of the Rails. Um, when it comes to a quicker card game, this one's pretty good. And uh, anyways, let me just uh, jump in and show you uh, uh, it in a nutshell. There are various companies in the game, and that's what these are. You can see these... Um, these colors, there's red, yellow, blue, green. Those are the starting companies. So there's gonna be, there's four starting companies potentially. And then these are like the, what you would call a charter. And so this is what the company has. And basically it's showing that it's gonna have uh, different stations. It starts the game with a free station. And then there's a second one you can buy for 40 and a third one you can buy for 100. It starts with trains. And then it just shows that all their trains would be down below and all their money would be to the right. And so uh, some 18XS games have really large charters. This, these are nice small charters, okay? Um, <clears throat> the, the key thing to understand is that the business has its own money and you have your own money. The, the way you win the game is if your money is the most, uh, the business doesn't matter. So you can have a company that you run into the ground and it goes bankrupt and you even get a letter from Trump congratulating you for the best bankruptcy ever. The, the, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is how much personal cash you have. So um, that's a very important thing. But uh, also bear in mind that the way you make personal money is if your companies do well. So uh, that's always this balance that you have, to, you have to deal with. So anyways, there's four companies that start. There's also... Um, you can see here, there's four more that can be started later in the game. And th these are the charters, and then, of course, those are the shares. There is track for the comp companies. And um, so you can see here that I have um, what's called yellow track, uh, because most 18xx games, um, uh, due to technology and things of that nature, uh, usually you start in a yellow phase, then you go to a green phase, and then a brown where brown represents like uh, more modern trains, more, you know, upgraded technology. And so uh, here you could see that you can have uh, one uh, station and your revenue would be $20, okay? And then it has track that goes left and right. And then here you can see uh, you have a state, there's two stations possible and track goes in all four directions orthogonally and, and so forth. Now there are there is this concept of a Y city, which is a grand city, and then there's a normal city, and you'll see that the Y cities make more money because it's just a larger population city. That's what that's meant to represent. And then of course you have just regular track for extending. Okay, this should be nothing new on the 18xx side, but just in case, you know, I'm going through that. Now one thing they did in this game, which is pretty neat, is they have another side to them. So you could look at it this way, right? So it has some nice graphics. It shows track, and then here's where you would put your station, right there on the corner. Or it looks like this, which means the same thing. And what's really funny is <laughs> I've played enough 18xx games that this appeals to me more than the prettier side. 
<laughs> so um, I apologize if some of you like the pretty side more. Um, I, I'm i going old school here, and uh, I guess it's like those, you know, war gamers that insist on the old uh, military hex or military chits and whatnot. Um, so anyways, uh, that's it. Uh, with that, I can go, I can explain this stuff forever and ever, but I'm going to just keep going. Uh, there is, uh, in this game, there are eight phases, or eight rounds, and then the game ends. So it's a very fixed um, round game. Uh, company shares are going to start typically here. Uh, there is one exception. And, and then uh, whenever your company makes money and pays dividends to its shareholders, which is how you make money, it will go up in value. And it just marches along until it gets to here. Um, this is obviously the maximum amount, and uh, it's very hard to get uh, with a starting company, but it's pretty easy to get with one of the four other companies. Well, I don't, I don't want to say easy, easy, but you know what I mean. Okay, so um, some games in 18xx uh, don't have a fixed turn limit. Some do. Uh, this one does, and it makes sense in this game. Uh, there's also starting characters. So you actually have, uh, I think, seven starting characters, and they each have their own... Uh, well, maybe they only have five starting characters, and they each have their own uh, uh, bonus. This is a first player marker, which I don't need. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just set that out of the game. Uh, every player gets one of these, which is not used in the solitaire version, and I'm going to play the solitaire game. So, uh, so we don't use these. Um, what this would be is this is a free copy someone else's action card. Um, this game has action. So when it's your turn, you actually have to pick what action you're going to do. Um, some 18xx games, uh, you always do a set number of actions, right? You lay track, then you can buy trains, or I'm sorry, then you collect revenue or run your trains, you know, pay out dividends, and then you can buy trains. That's not the case here. The case here is when it's your turn, you draw an action card, and you get to pick. And, uh, and that's the action you do, and that's all you do on your turn. So you're either running, comp you know, you're either doing something else or this. So here, for example, I'm, I'm buying trains. Here, I'm laying track. Take note that it's one or the other. I don't get to do both on my turn. Now, uh, on a given round, you get to do two of these. So it is possible I can do both of these in one round, but that's me taking two turns in the same round. I hope that makes sense. What this does is this lets you take an action that somebody else already did. Because as soon as somebody takes this card, nobody else can use it, right? That's mine until the end of the round, and then it goes back in the pool. Also in a multiplayer game, there's a whole bunch more. Like here you can see there's an action that, that isn't even in the solo game. And uh, that action is uh, you're giving your, your company uh, money based on what, uh, what tech level we're at. Um, all of these are out of the game in the solo uh, version. So the multiplayer is a lot more rich in terms of the actions available. And, uh, and anyways, um, the, uh, the AI player doesn't even take these action cards. So we don't even need these. Uh, but when you're in a multiplayer, this, action, this is a once per game card that lets you copy an action once per the entire game. So, um, and if you don't use it, by the end, you get 20 bucks to your personal money. Um, uh, like I said, in the solo version, we don't use that. So uh, that goes out, and so do all these actions. Now, there's also a giant stack of uh, things that aren't used, and, uh, and it's really interesting because this game has scenarios in it. We're doing what's called the basic game. So you can see here, there's, there's a basic game, and it tells you what track uh, goes in the basic game. There's also Alan Beck, Laputa, Robdingang, and, uh, and then just a miscellaneous scenario. Um, there's different rules for each one. Uh, I didn't bother reading the rules for these other ones, so I couldn't even tell you what they do. I know that they use those track tiles that you see there that are out of the game. So uh, you will have a lot of components that aren't used in the basic game, and that's fine. Um, uh, it just shows how much uh, Lilliput has different options for you. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is there's this chart in the back of the book, which is almost identical to this. And uh, every player gets one of these. And what it's trying to say is we start the game with two trains. 
And here you can see that that's the yellow technology level. So that means we can only use yellow track, okay? Then eventually you get to green track when you buy a three train, and then eventually it becomes brown track when somebody buys a five train, and then there's this 3D and 4D, which means you get to pick three cities and double it, and a 4D is doubling four cities. Um, uh, this is the number of trains your company can own. So at the beginning of the game, you can actually own four trains. Uh, but later, uh, it reduces the number you can own, and uh, it eventually uh, becomes only two. Uh, this is um, what's called a half train, and I don't think I've ever encountered this before, but it's a pretty neat concept. And what that is is that uh, normally your trains are full strength, uh, like this is a two train, and I'll explain what full strength means in a second if you don't know what that is. But eventually, when somebody buys a four train, it actually goes to half strength, which means, so here, here's, so full strength means you get to visit two cities and add up its value. So if I was, uh, you know, this, this city here, right? And I was connected to this city here, right? I would be able to take 30 plus 20, that's $50. This train just earned $50 for the company. Okay, and that's what a two train would do, is you pick two of them, and they, as long as they're connected by track and connected to your station, oops, sorry about that, um, you would get $50. So um, what this is saying is when the four train is purchased, uh, this flips over, and now it's a half. So yes, it would still make the $50, but then you cut it in half to 25, and the company only gets $25. Um, so it's pretty brutal. Uh, in that regard, uh, but uh, it doesn't rust yet. And then here you can see when a five train is bought, then it rusts completely. And rust is an 18xx term that just means that the trains are no longer usable, they're out of the game. Usually when somebody buys a four train, the twos rust, which means that even though the, you used them last turn, they're completely out and they leave immediately. You don't get any compensation for them or anything. This game has a gradual rust where you go to half strength and then eventually you rust completely. Okay? All right, so, uh, and then you can see here that the threes eventually rust when the four Ds come out. Okay, so uh, that's that's it in a nutshell with the game. Now, uh, I, I contemplated trying a multiplayer game where I play all sides. It's a little silly, even though uh, you saw me do 18OE twice that way. Um, I, uh, I don't own this game, I borrowed it, so I don't have a lot of time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you the solo version, which I actually found interesting because there are, to my recollection, only one 18xx solo game out there, and it's like out of print and hard to get. It's some England game, and um, I've never played it because it's just that unavailable. <clears throat> um, so this is the only other one I've ever found that has solo play. So um, we're gonna give it a try. I've never done this before. I've played multiplayer, so I do understand the rules. At, you know, I, maybe some weird technical nuance I would get stuck or hung up on, but uh, we're gonna be fine, is what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna just put all these things aside. So now, um, in this solo version, uh, we have, so let me explain what would happen in a multiplayer. So this is the starting city in the game. It starts here, and then, uh, Players in turn order, or reverse turn order, would pick one of the four companies, and each of them has a bonus, and I'll go over those in a second, or one of these starting characters. Okay, so then um, it goes all the way to the first player, and he picks last, but then it does what's called a snake draft. So now um, the first player gets to go again immediately, so if he took a, a starting character, then the next thing he has to take is a company. So by the end of the snake draft, you're gonna own one starting character and one company. That's, that's the gist. So in a four player game, all four companies would be gone and then four of these five starting characters would be gone. So uh, that's how it would work with player four going first. And if player four took the red company, then when it's player's four turn again, uh, he would have to take whatever one of these is left. Um, in a solo game, uh, we just pick, uh, we have to randomly pick which of these company he gets, and then he gets it before we get to pick. And then we just pick any character we want and any one company we want, 
and then everything else just sets aside um, and is out. So, um, uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, so we're going to be uh, obviously having, we won't have all four of them starting the game. The other thing with the solo game, in a, in a multiplayer game, is these trains are stacked with the twos being first, and then you'll see the threes come next, and then the fours, etc., all the way up till the 4D. And then, uh, basically, uh, at the start of every round, one of them is immediately removed uh, due to bureaucracy, and that's sort of like your timer, right? It's moving the, the trains to the higher levels. Um, the uh, rules say that we're going to start with a significantly, so you can see there's a pretty thick stack of trains in a multiplayer game, but in a solo game, we're going to be removing most of these. So um, uh, I'll, I'll go over that with you in a second, uh, but just letting you know that uh, we're going to have a lot smaller stack of trains. They, I already told you that we're only going to play with four actions, whereas there's like a, there's at least six other action cards that were taken out of the game. So Solo uh, reduces that. But we do get to start with all the starting characters, and we, we have to pick one, of course. But, but um, anyways, let me dive in and uh, explain some stuff to you. So the first one is the different companies. And so uh, the rule book is fairly helpful. Um, so here you can see in section 11, it tells you what the different companies do. So for example, the blue company, uh, sorry, I'm snagging on the camera there. The blue company starts on a Y city. And remember I explained the Y cities are your grand cities that have a higher value. So normally it's a value 20 that they start on. This is a value 30. So that's a pretty good bonus. Uh, the green company starts with $60 in private starting capital instead of 30. So uh, every player starts the game with 30 bucks. So I have 30 and the AI has 30. So I put his money over there. So that's my money. So uh, whoever takes the green company will just automatically start with $30 more. Uh, that doesn't seem like a good thing, but remember that's how you win is having more personal money. So that's actually pretty good. Okay, the yellow company starts with two, two trains. Every other company starts with one. So um, uh, that's a nice advantage. The two train costs $80. So, um, and then the red company uh, starts, so um, all three companies start with a share value of 50. So that means that they're gonna have $500 in cash, company cash. Uh, and then uh, the red company is going to start at 55 and have $550 company cash. So it's going to be worth more, which means that your shares are worth more than someone else's shares. And that means that at the end of the game, when you sell all your shares for their net value, uh, you've already started the game with more net value than everybody else, which is translation. That means personal cash. So your personal cash is higher with that one. Um, so we get to pick. I have no idea what's the best one. I can tell you in the multiplayer game, I was this red company and I was okay with it. It wasn't um, wasn't the best in the world, but it was okay. And um, uh, anyways, uh, let's move on to the characters. So the characters are a lot more uh, varied here and there's a chart that explains what they do. Let me find it. Oh, where are you? Sorry, just trying to find it. And then of course, here they are. So there's a chart here that explains what the characters do. So this first guy, Golbasto, Mo, whatever, 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 um, he gets to lay Y tiles for free. Normally it costs $50 to lay a Y tile out of company money. So the company has to pay 50 bucks to be able to lay a Y tile. He gets to lay one for free. Now, I'll tell you, I was this guy in a multiplayer game, and he sucked. And uh, I'm not even being shy about that. He sucked because the other players got to go before I did, and they would lay the Y tiles, so by the time it got to me, there were no Y tiles left. There's only two in the whole game. So there's two yellow, and then two green, etc. So um, it, it was just the crappiest... Uh, superpower ever. I never got to, I got to use it once. I, the people would, if they watch this video, they would correct me. Don't ever say never. You used it once. I used it like at the very end of the game when it was worthless. 
Yeah, you can tell my blood pressure is up. I didn't like this guy. Now, the one thing he has that's nice is he starts with this special track that only he gets to use. And it's a T. Um, and I can show you here. Um, it's this one right here. So it's a T track that uh, it's $30 uh, if there's no token here. But if you put a token here, it's worth $50 to whoever puts the token there. So you got to be careful. You got to make sure you <laughs> uh, put the token there, or otherwise you're not getting the $50. And then, of course, that's the prettier version of it. So uh, this is nice because a $50 revenue, which you can get fairly early in the game, um, you can see here a $50 revenue is brown level revenue. So that part was good. So I'm not saying he stunk. Totally, but this ability was just awful. Okay, this next guy, uh, the cost to lay a station marker is reduced by 50%. And then he gets to lay um, this particular tile, which you can see pays more in the yellow phase, but then reduces its pay as the game goes on. So, um, and it cannot be upgraded, but it can be laid as a yellow track. Um, so what's crazy about this one is uh, it pays a ton in the beginning, but it has re diminishing returns as the game goes on. This one, I saw the player play with this one. I actually think this one's pretty powerful. Uh, getting more early money is good. Uh, the um, ability to lay a station marker reduced by 50%. What that's referring to is this. Um, your station marker is $40, and this is company money, right? So he, the company would only have to pay $20 and $50 to lay... To lay its station markers. All right, so this next guy, Balmuff, the Grand Justiciary, he gets five dollars in private treasury or twenty dollars in his company's treasury uh, at the start of each round. So you get to you get to choose uh, where it goes. So he's either gonna get five bucks or he can put twenty bucks in one of his companies. Uh, and then he comes starts the game with these two uh, towns. And basically what these are, it says doesn't count towards a range, which means like if I have a two train, I don't count this as one of my two. I, this is a free $10 uh, bump. Oh, one thing I should explain why uh, that's powerful is the game rules for laying track are, so let's say I have a city here. I can't lay another city next to it. Uh, if there's a token spot here, it has to be connected to track, so it's every other. So now I can lay a token spot there. I can never have two token spots next to each other. So that's extremely important uh, uh, aspect to the game. And uh, so what that means is this one, uh, it counts as a track, but you actually get $10 in revenue. So that's the advantage that that has. Um, this next guy, Skalresh Bogolem, the High Admiral. The cost for each train which is bought from the bank is reduced by 10%. So that can be helpful, especially in a late game. Uh, no track tile, and then he gets these two harbor tiles. So uh, they look like this. And you can see they're dead end tiles. And they give you 20 bucks. And they don't count as one of the cities. So it's a free $20. Um, but it is a dead end, so you have to be uh, really smart about how you lay those. And then this last one, maybe trade uh, Flip, Flimnap, the High Lord Treasurer, maybe trade it in for private money. The amount is rounded by... Uh, okay, so basically, you can get rid of your, your, your... So this guy basically sells himself. I guess he's a gigolo or something. He sells himself for money. And so... Uh, uh, let's say you, you get rid of them in round one, what it's saying is, is you would get 10 bucks. But if you wait till round three, you get 30 bucks. It's just a round number times 10. So if you wait until uh, round eight, you would get 80 bucks for him. And uh, that's it. I mean, you just trade them in and you get that money uh, by 10 and that goes to your private money. So that's your money. Then he gets this special uh, tile called Legnag, which looks like this. And so the weird one about this is if you're coming, uh, so one end has a token spot. So you can see this is a dead end token spot, but the left and right are going around it. So basically this T here doesn't connect to the token spot. It goes, it basically bypasses it. So it's a really weird city. I mean, it is 60 bucks. And I think it says 
You can lay it as a yellow city tile, but only after the brown phase started. So uh, that's the reason why it's got this brown around the edge. So you have to wait until the brown phase to use it, but uh, you can use a yellow city tile. And what that means is um, uh, these, this action here means I get to lay a yellow track and a green track, or a one, one, one. Well, now I can do this action and lay two different track, and I can lay this, even though it's a brown track, I can lay it as a yellow, uh, or otherwise, if it was a brown track, I would have to go down here and use the bottom action, which is only lay one track. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, so being able to lay it as a yellow is a little bit of a boost. So those are our choices, and uh, I don't know which ones to take. I can tell you that since I'm not playing multiplayer, uh, that guy that gets to lay Y tiles for free is actually now very attractive because I'm not going to have people messing with me now. <laughs> so I am going to pick him. So I think it was this son, the, the, the emperor. So I'll take him and I get this free thing that goes with me. Everything else is out of the game. Um, we do have to figure out what company the AI is getting. So I have a four-sided die and we're just gonna do uh, one, two, three, four. So I rolled a one. So he's gonna take the blue company. Okay, so these blue company shares, what he does is he gets the 50% ownership. That's the president's share. And I'm just gonna set these other ones off to the side. So the AI has a 50% share in blue, okay? This is his private money, okay? This is his share, he has five shares of it. Also private money. Um, he didn't have to pay anything. It, uh, most 18xx games, you have to pay money out of your personal money. Uh, I guess the way this game works is that $35 is after he's already bought this. So uh, it's already considered to be paid for. So this, um, uh, this uh, also belongs to him. And so we put that over there. But the thing we have to be mindful of is that that company gets $500. So... I'm just gonna be lazy and use 100s right now. So uh, it gets $500 and I'm gonna put it like so. So this is the company money and that's his money, okay? He doesn't need these cards, so I'm gonna put those also out of the game. And just bear with me because I'm trying to do stuff while holding the camera. Like I said, this isn't my copy and I'm just trying to make sure all the components are well well taken care of. Um, the game comes with paper money. And so if you're a sadist, uh, you're welcome to use it. Uh, as you can tell, we, <laughs> we never did. Um, and we never will. Um, okay, so <clears throat> I'm pretty sure every company starts with a two train. So I'll give him his two train. And uh, the blue uh, company starts with a Y city. So, um, uh, he gets a free Y city, and um, so uh, basically we have to lay one of those for him. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself, so let me um, let me just finish this setup here. So since I picked the starting player, all the other starting players are out, so I can get rid of those. And now we get to pick our company. Uh, I'm not interested in the higher share value one. I think I'm going to go for the one that starts with two two uh two trains so i'm gonna go with that one and these other two are out uh this one's nice because getting the 60 dollars in personal money um helps you because then you can um you can like buy shares quicker of your own stock or somebody else's by the way the cert limit in this game is five you're only allowed to have five certs so for those of you that don't know what does that mean cert limit of five cert limit of five means um this is one cert right here. Even though this is five shares, it's one certificate. So he's only allowed to have five of these in the uh, entire game. Uh, so if you get to five and you want another one, you have to sell one of your shares and and buy another one. So that's some of the <clears throat> some of the gist of it. So I'm going to lay my my player here, and then my my uh, my train. Hmm. How should I do? I'm going to move my player up and then my train, uh, my company there. Uh, so that way you can see 
like that a little bit better. And then of course he has this track, uh, the special track that's owned by the player. So I got this as part of the character. Um, when I would take my turn, either at the start of my turn before I do my action, or after I do my action, this is a free tile lay. So um, the red shares are out. And I don't know if they're out of the game. That's the one thing, because I've never played less than four players before. So these starting companies that weren't picked, I, are they out of the game? I think the answer is yes. So I'm going to assume that. Uh, if somebody knows the answer, let me know. Um, the rule book might say, I just didn't, didn't find it. I, I admit I, I've already played this before, so I know how to play. So I didn't read the whole rule book front to back. So I am being a little lazy, but I'm trying to get this play in before I have to give this game back. All right, so solo rules. So we chose one of the four companies. Uh, Gulliver, that's his name. The AI's name is Gulliver. He gets his starting capital, the 50% director share. Okay, so his starting capital is at $35. He gets the blue 50%. Uh, we get the yellow 50%, and the other shares are out. Um, okay, so next, uh, the company receives no starting capital. So basically, his company doesn't get this money that I just gave him. His company is just going to buy crap for free, because um, it's an AI. It's a little abstract. It's like uh, Anachrony or any other game, or even Gaia Project where the AI just does things, even like Space Core. Space Core doesn't have to have build points, they just build. Well, that's what's gonna happen with this. Okay, so then uh, we choose randomly the city track tile, if there's two possibilities. There wasn't, because he starts on a Y tile. Um, then we choose one of the three remaining companies and a character card, which we did. The other starting, oh, here we go. The other starting companies are out of the game, so don't bother responding if you did. The Diamond Land copy cards are not used, and that's, um, I already explained that. Those are the things that let you uh, take an action that was already taken. And then uh, it's telling you that these are the four action cards that are in the game. All the other ones are out, so I have them listed as so. And then uh, it has what happens in the gameplay, and so I'm just going to lay this down because we're going to be referencing that as we play. So... Um, and it says, after the starting companies receive their two trains, build a train card deck with two trains of each type, except for the 4D, because 4D is always unlimited. So we happen to get two two trains with our company. So I'm going to just lay them like this, because those belong to this yellow company. And then what it's saying is that there's only two in the deck, so the other two are out of the game. So I have two two trains. I have two threes. And then all the other threes are out of the game. And then I have two fours, and all the other fours are out of the game. I have two fives, and then the fives are out of the game. Two three Ds, and then the three Ds out of the game. And then it says uh, four Ds are unlimited. So so we, um, we do that, and that's our train deck. And I'm going to just put that up in front of, you know, up there in the corner. So uh, just remember that there's a bureaucracy phase where those get... Uh, killed. Uh, so one of those trains just goes away. Um, it is neat because when, when the bureaucracy phase happens, so let's say this train goes away, it actually goes here, and if somebody were to start a new company, that new company can buy this train. So it's sort of available for that round in that kind of way. The other thing that you can do as an option, as I've explained that when you run, you can, you know, you, you basically get revenue. So in that example I gave earlier, if let's say I made $50 in revenue. Well, it's a 10 share company. I own 50% of it. So I would get $25. The company would get the other $25. Uh, and then if anybody owned the other shares, they would get, you know, $5. And then the company would just get $5 less. Well, that's if you pay out. You do have the option to withhold. And if you withhold, you uh, actually go backwards on the stock track because, you know, your shareholders are upset. Um, but if you withhold, you actually have the right to buy these trains that are down here. And that um, is a viable option if you want to do that. 
So I was trying to explain that. I didn't do it much in a multiplayer game, but I did see people do it. And uh, it's something that is a choice for us should we need it. Okay, so <clears throat> I have to, as part of the setup, this is his track, and I'm just gonna put it right here, like so. And uh, what it was saying is, is I have to determine randomly because normally you start with these tracks. And so there's straight cities and then there's curves. So it was telling me to roll a die to choose which one he gets. But he starts with a Y city and that Y city is that. And so uh, there's nothing uh, he can do about that. And then um, I also get to start with a Y city for free. But can it be my first one? Let me... It says free laying of yellow tiles instead of paying $50. So can I do the Y city as my initial lay? I don't think I can because they didn't let me do that in a multiplayer game. They didn't let me do that at all. So I'm gonna assume no, I can't. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I will I'm gonna put a straight here. So we're gonna start like this. So the track's probably not gonna go as left or down, so that's why I'm moving it over to the left. Okay, so, uh, so we do that, and then we have to get our tokens. So, so for example, I have the yellow company, and so I need to find the yellow tokens. Here's one, two, That might be the yellow. Nope. This is the yellow company. So there's this like acorn company and then there's this. A lot of them look very similar. Three and I think, nope, that's an acorn. What color, these are orange. So, so they're orange pieces of wood, but it's the yellow company. So go figure. All right, so I'm the yellow company, so I go there. And then what happens is the other ones go here. And I honestly don't know what the extra, oh yeah, I'm sorry. The last one goes on the stuck board. I'm being a goober. Okay, so now he's got the blue company. So that would be this one. He's the blue boot. Two, three, and four. Okay. So his company gets two of them. They go like so, and then this one is also at $50. And then um, he starts on the Y, like that. Okay, that's setup of the game. So now we can go ahead and get started and do the actual gameplay. So I have the rule book here, and it's just explaining to me that the game plays eight rounds like it always is. Uh, first, the player chooses two action cards and performs one of the two possible actions. Then Gulliver goes, and then I believe we get to go. Um, so Gulliver goes. Two action cards performs one of the two possible actions of each card. Oh, we actually get to do both of our actions. So we go first, and we get to do both of our actions, and then he goes. Ooh, interesting. Okay, well, let's go over what the actions are. So this first one is you get to lay track. Now, bear in mind, I can't lay green track yet until I've unlocked the green phase. And remember, a green phase is unlocked when somebody buys a three train. So this one is only as good as laying a yellow track, and that's it. And then down here, it's one or the other. And so basically, they're both the same action. You only get to do the top or the bottom, okay? This one is sell as many shares as you want, and then you only get to buy one share. Uh, or you can lay more track. This one is I can buy two trains, or I can take $5 into my personal money, okay? This one is also $5 in my personal money, or I can lay one of those tokens which are right there. 
Okay, so uh, my two actions, now mind you, I already have two, two trains, so having another uh, train is not really attractive. Laying the token, don't need it yet. So I'm definitely laying track, and I think I'm gonna lay two track. That's what I'm gonna do. So uh, remember, I can't lay a city next to uh, where I'm at. So I have to, so I'm gonna do something like this. And then uh, I get to lay Y tiles for free. So I'm gonna lay this Y tile, like so, for free. And that is my turn. Now, I would love to put a token there, but remember, I have to do an action to do that, so can't do that. Okay, so now we're gonna do his turn, and uh, there's quite a few steps here, so let's go through them and see what his AI uh, chart is telling me, and I apologize, let me, maybe I can hold it up. So uh, first thing it says is Gulliver lays one track tile, building rules, so we, we do the first possible step. Upgrade green to brown, nope. Upgrade yellow to green, nope. Build a yellow city, he can't because he's stuck to the same rules we are. Build a yellow plane track tile, so we're gonna do that. So only tiles with the station token are upgraded. First the home station track tile, then one of the other two. Green city tiles, the new track segment should point to Mildendo. Uh, yellow city tiles, if Gulliver has several cho choices to place yellow city, he chooses the one which is nearer to Mildendo. If there's a tie, yellow curves with or without a city. Choose randomly to which direction they are laid. Okay, so um, so the yellow track tiles that he has a choice of are these two. Now, I can tell you that most players would do this. So he now is connected to my Y city, but that's not how the AI works, so let's do it. Oh, I forgot to say what was what. So this will be uh, one, two, and this is three, four. So I rolled a three, four, so he's using this one. All right, so there's only one way to orient this. I mean, I guess you could make him go into there, but I let's not make the AI that stupid. So uh, we're gonna do that. And, uh, and that's his track laying. Then it says, lay a station marker. Gulliver lays station marker in each yellow city he just built until all three are laid. He didn't build one, so we skipped that. Additional plane track. If the city with one of Gulliver's station markers has a track segment leading to nowhere, a plane track tile is laid to continue the track. Okay, what that's saying is if he were to lay a city, then he can lay a, a, a second one. But that's not the case here. He laid a... Uh, a segment and, and not a city. Uh, share buying. So Gulliver never sells shares. If he can afford it, he buys a new 10% share per round. Choose randomly if there's more than one to choose. So uh, he can't afford it because he has $30 in cash and a new share is $50. Okay, so he doesn't have enough for that. And then train buying. Instead of putting the next available train card on the card train pool during bureaucracy, it's added to one of Gulliver's company. Okay, so what he's saying, what the game's saying is, is that when this comes out and goes to the bottom, like I had explained, it actually goes to his company instead. So he gets it automatically. So that's a little bit of a crappy thing, but that's how it works. If Gulliver has two companies, the next train, okay, so it, this I read before, this is just saying that, um, they're evenly distributed between his multiple companies. So if one company has two trains, the other one only has one, the one that only has one train gets the train. And then there's rules for when he's train tight, meaning he's at his maximum limit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so then we keep going and it says running trains. So it basically says run his trains and we're gonna make uh, him get the best possible run. Please don't cheat if you're playing solo. Oh, my goodness, give him the best possible run. Uh, it's already bad enough that he did this instead of connecting to a Y city. Um, and then uh, it says that he always pays to dividends. So meaning he's never gonna withhold. So we don't have to worry about that. And then we put the action cards back in the middle of the table. The turn counter is moved one space forward. But remember the bureaucracy phase um, or the uh, uh, we're going to have to, yeah, so before we run the trains, we have to give him the, uh, 
the train from the train pool. So that's a good question. Uh, on the card, during bureaucracy, it is added to one of, so bureaucracy happens later. So we're gonna run without him having that train yet. So, um, I see. So, uh, so what happens is, is this train, uh, before we operate our trains, this one actually goes to that pool I was telling you about. So now it's here, and he still only has just one train, but he's going to have two in, uh, as soon as this round's end over. That's what that means. And then, of course, we go for eight rounds. The final round, the eighth round, <clears throat> he, uh, we get to double our revenue. Okay, so I don't think it matters who goes first. So we'll go and do him. He has a, a two train. So you can see here he has 60 bucks. So at a 50% share ownership, he's going to get 30. And the company gets 30. Or no, the company does not get anything. Companies don't make money in this game. I forgot about that. I, my apologies. I'm so used to 18 OE. Um, companies don't get paid. Uh, and then him, his company is like a government in 18 OE. It's had infinite money. Um, but my company won't get paid. It starts the game with this $500 and that's it. I, uh... I have to do actions to give it money, but I actually don't even have those actions. So uh, I just got to make do with what I got. Okay, so so for me, I have two two trains, and you can see here I have 30 and 20 is 50, and then 30 and 30, or I'm sorry, 30 and 20 is 50 more. So I just made 100. So uh, $50 for me goes to my money, and like so. All right, so now we get to bureaucracy, and then what happens is he gets another train, like that. That's what happens. And then we move, uh, since we both paid out, we go up in stock, and there's a marker here I just didn't find. Oh, where would you be? Here it is. So then we move to phase two. Now we start all over again. So that's it, that was a whole round. <coughs> I'm sorry I'm 47 minutes into this. The explanation took a while. My apologies if you're familiar with 18xx and that was a little bit of a snoozer. But um, so now we, we go again and once again I get to go first. So um, the, uh, the rules for this is that I have to upgrade a yellow tile. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade my starting tile with it. So I'm going to do something like this and upgrade that and um, and then anytime you've uh, replaced something it goes back in the available pool um, if you played this multiplayer by the way this the train the, the tracks and the token spots are very tight it's real easy to block people and and get hammered that way so I uh, this was a free tile lay if you remember I still get to do two actions um, I'm not going to buy another two train because I already have two of them and I don't want to have too many because then I get stuck. Um, so this option is not good. Uh, the, this one is good though and I'm going to do it because uh, that Y tile is good. So I'm going to spend this and put it on there and that costs $40. So I'm going to take $100 of the company money and give him 60 bucks back. All right, so uh, that was one of our actions. And then the other one is, is let's lay more, oh no, maybe I should buy a share, let me think. Share cost is now $55, and so I have $55 right here. So I'm gonna buy a share of my own company. So I just pay that to the bank. Remember, I don't have to pay it to the company. And I take a yellow share, and now, I have 60% ownership. Um, so there's a couple of things going through my mind strategy-wise. The AI, according to the rule book, only buys, he will buy shares, but he will start another company. So there's four available companies to be started. He's going to start one of them as soon as he can afford it. Um, I could theoretically just buy the other three because the, these companies, when you when you start them, you're going to own five shares for one certificate. 
So if you could theoretically start the other three companies, um, you're going to own 15 shares. Whereas if I keep buying those, I'm only going to own 10%, which is one share for one certificate. So from a certificate efficiency perspective, it's better to start three new companies. So um, if I can only have five and I already have two, the other three would be new companies. Now, uh, that means that's assuming, of course, that I can afford to buy, start three new companies, but let's see how it goes. I think that's the right way to go. So our turn's over, so now we go to his turn. And once again, he's going to lay a track tile. Green tiles are still not available, so he's going to build a yellow city tile. And remember, we have to roll die, so one, two, or three, four. This is the one, two. So I rolled a two. So he's going to lay a yellow city tile. And then it says that he also lays another one. So uh, this will be one, two. Uh, all right, so then he's going to lay that as well. Um, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, never mind. That happens. And the reason that happens is not because of the way I described. What's happening is he gets to lay a station marker on any city that he just recently built. And if you'll notice, he only has three station markers. If he has a city with a station marker and this goes to nowhere, he does this. So eventually he's gonna run out of station markers and then he won't add that extra track anymore. But for now, he does get to lay this extra track because he has a station marker in that city. Okay, so sorry about that. And yes, he's gonna to try to buy shares. So uh, he may buy mine or he may buy his own. So we have to roll a die. So one and two is him. So he rolled a four. So he's gonna buy my share. So that's $50. So there's 25, 35, 45, 55. So it cost him almost everything he had, but that's fine. And he bought a share of yellow. And I'll just put it up here. Okay, so next, uh, he does train buying. And that, of course, uh, we, we do later. So now we're at that phase where this is gonna get booted out. Okay, so um, we're still in the two trains. And so uh, we're gonna run him first. He has two two trains. So here you can see $60 and then $50, so that's $110. So that means he's gonna get 55 bucks. So uh, 55 bucks for him. And then uh, we run for 30 and 50 is 80, and 50 and 30 is 80 more. We run for $160, so um, that's you know $16 a share, and we have six shares. So um, uh, that would be, uh, what? That, well, if I had 50%, it'd be $80. No, I'm sorry. Eight and eight, 16. That'd be $80 for 50%, and then I would just add 16 to it, right? Um, and yeah, so $96. So we get 96, so I'm going to take 100. And put four back. And let's not forget that he has one share, so he's getting $16 because he has one share of my company, and mine paid out uh, $16 a share. So he gets 16 from that. And that brings us to the, so both of our stocks go up, and we're moving to round three. So the game can go pretty quick. And that's what's really nice about this card game. Um, it goes fairly quick, and, and like I said, you got solo rules, which doesn't exist at all in most games. Okay, so um, so here's the crazy part about him, is he gets another two tray before we move on to the next round. So now it's uh, our turn again. We go first. I'm looking at our options. Uh, three trains are available for purchase. So it is not a bad idea uh, to maybe buy one of those. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to do a train purchase. 
The thing is, I don't think I'm going to buy two of them. I guess I could try, but if I did, I'd have nowhere to run them. <coughs> um, so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this. These are my two actions. And I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to spy a... Uh, Hmm, this is interesting. If I buy two, three trains, then the four trains are going to unlock already. Because there's only two of them in the game, remember? There's only two, three trains in the entire game. So uh, if I buy both of these, yeah, I'm sort of setting myself up for trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy one of them. And remember, my uh, train limit is four. And I can see that here. So the green tracks are unlocked by doing this. So now a, a green train has been purchased. You can see by the green circle. Uh, let me not forget to pay the money. So uh, green tracks are now unlocked. So I have a lot of options. The first one is I can upgrade to a green Y city. Um, or I can upgrade this so I can now connect to his city. Uh, both of them have uh, a lot of really great potential. And um, and I'm going to be able to lay a yellow track and a green track, which is also good. So what I think I'm going to do is, since I have a three train, I am... Uh, so for example, here... I mean, I can try to loop it around and connect to Mildendo again, but $30... Even though it's uh, good paying now, it's not good paying later in the game. So I'm going to go that way. Um, and then for the green, I'm either upgrading that Y city over there, or I'm putting this in. And I'm going to put this in so I'm connected to his stuff. I think that's going to be valuable to me uh, from a revenue perspective. So that was my yellow and green track. Now, one uh, thing to explain. I mentioned that you have to pay 50 bucks when you lay a Y city. Obviously, I had the special bonus that didn't require me to. And obviously, he didn't have to because, well, first of all, his company has infinite money. But secondly, that was his special ability as well. Um, when you upgrade to a green track, you don't have to pay the $50 anymore. It's only for the initial yellow track that the company has to pay 50 bucks. And it's out of the company money. Okay, so we're done. So I'm gonna look at his AI again. He's going to lay track in this order. Upgrade a green city tile to a brown. Nope, upgrade a yellow city tile to a green. Yes, and I'm going to assume he's doing a Y city. And uh, obviously I have to connect that way. So it's either this way or this way, right? So this way is one, two, and that way is three, four. So let's roll. I rolled a one, two, so I think I, that was this way. Okay, this now goes back in the pool. So somebody actually could build another Y city if they wanted. But remember, there's only two green Y cities, so um, you have to be careful with that. Now in my case, I get to lay these for free, so I can just plop those everywhere that I want, um, especially if all of these were gone, which they're not. Um, but anyways, uh, I... Uh, I need to think about that more. Okay, so um, he did that, and it would say he gets to add another, um, he gets to lay another track if he has a token with a station, or a, a track with a station that goes to nowhere, but that's the case. So one, two for straight, three, four. So he's putting in a curve. So we can either go this way or that way. So this way is one, two. All right, so he's going this way. And there you go. So he laid his track. He lays a station. Nope, he didn't lay any cities. Uh, he can buy a share. So right now he would buy a share, but he has 50, let's look at his money. He has 50, 60, 70 dollars, and shares are 60 bucks. So mine is one, two, his is three, four. So he's buying another share of mine. 50, 60, and it says he never sells shares, so um, 
And it also says that he's only going to buy three shares this way, and then he's going to eventually uh, use the last share to start a new company. And he says that the new company only places the original start station marker and nothing else, just in case we get to that point. Okay, so now we, we move this train out, and then we run. So I'll do him first, and he has a two, a two, and another two. So uh, one two here is $70. Uh, another two, and this is, this is where he's in trouble, right? There's no city here. He can go up and over, but then he can't reuse the same track twice. So he can at least go to our city for an extra 10 bucks. So, uh, so he'll go $70 and $70 for 140. And then he can do this city and then just go nowhere. So he can, it's a one ended city. So 140, 160, basically. He has 50% share, so he gets $80. So not bad for him. All right, so then we get to go, and uh, we have a three, a two, and another two. So the, I have to really think this through, like what would, oh, see I can go from here to there to there for three. And then I can go here for two, and then I can go there for two. And yes, you can use this more than once as long as you're coming from different directions. So 30, 70, 100, plus 60, so that's 16, and then eight more is 24. So 24 a share. All right, so I get $144. I'm taking 145 and putting a dollar back. And then uh, he gets, um, he has two shares, so he's gonna get 48, I believe. Yes, sorry, I'm really tired today. So uh, I'm uh, always using a calculator for my math because I'm not gonna do good uh, without it. All right, so, um, okay, so that's our situation money-wise. And uh, everybody goes up, and we move to round four. All right, so we are first. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything with his AI. Oh, he gets the train. So now he has four trains. Um, it does say that if he were to get more, then the two goes away. So uh, he will constantly get whatever the new train is. Um, the four train, by the way, is still green, so we don't have any worries there. Um, I'm for sure taking this, because the laying two tiles thing is powerful. I don't think, well, do I want a four train? I can't afford a five train, I don't think. I need $400, and you can see I only have $310. So I do want to buy a four train, I just don't know if I want to buy it now. Uh, if I buy a share, I can afford some shares. I have 100 200 and roughly $50. So if I started a, let's say a $70 company, I need 350. So I'm not quite there. So I don't need to buy shares yet. So yeah, I'll buy another train and I'll spend $300, the company money. So now the company just has 10 bucks left. And we now have four trains which is bonkers. And then we get to lay a yellow and a green, and I'm gonna for sure uh, get this in before it's too late. And I think I'm gonna go like so. Now, what that does is that actually helps the blue player because he can now, uh, as you can see here, he can go through. And so that does help him. Uh, bear in mind that this is only a $30 city for him, it's $50 for us. So, uh, but the Y city upgrade was the important part. That was our green track, and now we get to lay a yellow track. So I'm gonna go ahead and, hmm. I think, I 
I don't know what I want to do. I think we'll try something like this. See if we can connect to that city in more than one way. So now it's his turn, and we know from his priority he's going to upgrade to a green city tile. So uh, this is the upgrade, and uh, hmm. here's the funny thing. I'm not sure he's allowed to do that when I have a connection there, and I actually didn't counter that in the multiplayer game. Because people in a multiplayer game want to connect to you because that helps them too. Um, So it says all track segments on the replace tile must be maintained, which is fine. I think he can go the other way. So basically he can refuse to connect with me. So, uh, interesting. All right, so uh, one and two means that he's gonna connect with us. Three and four means he won't. And of course I roll a three. So uh, he has to maintain this. So he could have gone like that. Yeah, that was the only way. It was either this way or that way. So he rolled to do this. So he basically cut us off. Punk. Okay, he doesn't get a bonus tile because uh, he doesn't go have any dead ends going anywhere. And uh, now we just do uh, the operating round. So. This four gets killed, and he has a three, two, two, and two. So let me think this through. See, what's crazy is he could have done a two, or actually a three up here, and then a two, and then a two, and actually gotten some really nice revenue. But because of what he did, he's stuck. Because if he does, a, he can do a three, or maybe a two, and a three this way, but then this one won't, well, I guess he could do that, yeah. So he's gonna do 70 for a two, and then eight, 11, so that's 18 for his three. And then this two will just start at this city and go nowhere, so that's 21 for a two, and then that's it. I know he has another two, but I'm not gonna let him use the same city twice just to get crappy go nowhere money. Because technically speaking, you can. I, in fact, I'm. I'm not even sure. Let me. Let me make sure. That's a good question. This changes with every game too. I know most 18xx games let you do it if that's your only train option. A route may not visit any revenue location more than once. So I probably cheated with the red center. So I cheated as well. So let's understand that. You can't use Mildendo more than once. Okay, it says each route must have two or more locations. Okay, so here's my apology to all of you. Um, you may recall I did a route here and then I did a route that went around and connected again. So that was cheating. I can only do this once. So I either had to do this route or that one, okay? But it also says that you can't just have a single location. So I used one of his two trains that collected this 30 bucks, but it didn't actually go anywhere. So uh, we cheated on his turn and my turn and I'm just gonna call it a wash because this was a $30 revenue and that was a $30 revenue. So uh, let's just call it even.
but we'll play it the correct way from here on out. And my apologies. So um, when he runs his trains, he can do a two for 70. And this is 11. So that's 18. And then that's it. He can't run any of his other trains. Had he connected this the other way, he would have gotten another revenue. So uh, the AI sort of hurt himself there. But because um, it's, yeah, I mean, I guess technically you could argue he's hurting me too. But I think he hurt himself more. But uh, that's not for us to decide. That was his choice. Um, so we said uh, 18. So that means he gets $90. So I'm going to grab $100 for him. And take $10 back. All right, so now it's our turn. And you can see we have more trains that we're going to be able to use. Four, three, two, and two. So um, he really did hurt us. But for sure, this is $80, a two train. And then a three train would be 50, 90, and 40 more. So 13. So 13 and 8. 21. So uh, I think that's the best we can do. We're going to just use four or three trains. Uh, and I can't, I can't run into this again. So, so 21, a share. He gets two shares worth, so he gets $42. So, so for him, he gets 42 bucks because he has two shares. And then I have six shares, so I get $126. So 126, like so. Okay, so now to continue out the AI, uh, this four is going into his arsenal, and then the two train is out of the game. So I'm just gonna set it up there out of the game all right and I think he buys a share let me get back to his AI here uh, he would have bought a share before we ran the train so so all this money that he made is not available to him yet so would he have been able to buy a share Yes, he has like a hundred bucks. So, mm, he ran for 70, 18, he ran for 90 bucks. So yeah, cause that's what that is. That's his 90 bucks. And then this was his 42. Okay, so he has that money available. So he can buy a share. Shares are only $65, so um, one and two is me. He's gonna buy one of his shares now. So the he now has a 10% share of this, and he is at his limit for these, and the only thing he's gonna spend money on from here on out is he's going to buy, um, uh, he's gonna buy uh, a new company. So we're gonna just put his money there. And uh, like the rule said, uh, he never sells his own shares. So he never sells shares, period. So um, he's just gonna live with what he's buying here. Okay, so they go up and then up. Sorry, I did that in the wrong order. Um, but it all worked out fine. Okay, so new round, new actions. Uh, if we don't buy a five train, uh, the companies, that will end up happening before we operate our trains. So just as a reminder, as soon as, oh, as soon as the four came out, our twos became half value. All of them did. Uh, does that change things? Not for me, because I had a four and a three train. So I only ran two routes, right? So my three train just hits two, my four does this. Um, but for him, that did impact him, I'm letting it go. His, uh, I'm so sorry. So when that four train was purchased, these two trains are only half value. And he only had that when he ran last time. 
So you can see here we ran a uh, two train and then we ran a three for him. So this was $70 and I paid him out at $7 a share, but really uh, I have to cut that in half. So uh, he owes, he loses 35 bucks. This, no. He loses three and a half dollars a share. So that's times five. He loses seventeen and a half dollars. So we'll just round it down and just pay seventeen. So my apologies again for missing that. I'm supposed to be teaching you the game, not screwing it up all along, but uh, my sorry is there. Uh, so anyways, there you go. So now that's the situation. But what I'm trying to tell you is that the five train is going to be uh, taken out uh, automatically. And as soon as that's taken out, two things happen. We go to brown phase, which is too late for me because we're laying our track now. But the two trains are going to completely rust. See, this happens fast. This game just accelerates really fast. So um, it's not brown phase for us yet. So I still have yellow and green. And I also have this option to buy a new company, which I think is what I'm going to do. So uh, again, I apologize. Uh, this happens now. This goes to here. So we are in the brown phase right now and the two trains are gone. So three and four, Three and four for us. Uh, I can't afford a new train even if I wanted it. I can lay brown tracks. So now what I want to do is I want to consider, do I start a new company? And there are, we're on round five. So there's going to be um, one, two, three more bumps in the game. So I want to start a company somewhere around here so I can still get to the maximum bumps, if you will. Um, I would need $500 in personal money. So maybe I don't want to do that, but maybe I want to start a company at a lower amount. So, um, so what I'm thinking I would do is I would start a company, let's just see how much money I have. I have $350 there, so $350 divided by five. I can start a company at $70, which is where the other companies are right now. So 350 bucks would start me a new company. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I'll grab this orange company. So now I have a 50% share of that. And then the orange company gets 350 bucks starting money. No, no it doesn't. Yeah, it does. So, uh -huh. no, it gets 10 shares worth. So it's going to get uh, $700 in starting money. Remember, it's a 10 share company. I just bought the president's share for 350. So the company itself gets 10 shares worth. It gets, it's called full value or full capitalization. So the company uh, has $700 and 350 of that was mine because I own 50% of the shares. So that's what I had to do. I had to be able to buy. So this one is that company. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start him there and block the AI player. Okay. So now we get two actions. And remember, these same two actions, well, that was one of the actions, right? I bought a share. The other one is, I probably want to lay a brown track, or I can lay a yellow and a green. And this is, uh, this is really challenging, but uh, I'm thinking I want to lay a brown, because then if I upgraded his city, I can finally get connected and have some options. 
uh, that's one thing. But see, then I can only lay the one track. Or if I laid a yellow and a green, could I get something out of that? I honestly don't know. But I know he's going to try to, when it's his turn, he's going to upgrade one of his cities. And there's only one brown Y city in the entire game. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm taking it before he does. So I'm going to lay that brown Y city, but this is now available. So um, that goes out. And that's our two actions. We bought a share, which started a new company, and we laid a track. Okay, so now it's his turn, and I'm gonna go through his AI a little slower so I don't screw up so much. Um, he lays a track. He's gonna upgrade a green city to a brown because that's the first priority for him. So he would love to do this one, but there's no brown Y available. So then he's going to upgrade the other one. Oh, see this? He was supposed to lay a track last turn. Four. So then we're going to do that or that. So uh, the, this one is one, two. All right. So he's doing that for some reason. Okay. And then we're upgrading this. And that's it. Okay. So then he would lay a station, but he hasn't had to lay a station yet because he has never laid a new city. Um, he would do an additional track, which is what I did here. I was supposed to do that last turn, so I hurried up and did it before he took his turn here. Now he can buy a share. But remember, he's only gonna start a new company, and it says his fifth and last share will be to buy the 50% share of a new company. Oh, so sorry. Jesus. Okay. He buys it as soon as he can, a minimum of $250. And at the highest price he can afford. So I don't think he has $250. There's $100. Here's $50. Yeah, he doesn't have $250. Which is good, because a $250 company is crappy. So uh, he probably wants to wait another round anyways. But... Um, we started a new company. Oh, by the way, yes, see, rules. <laughs> we started this new company, and when you start a new company, you're allowed to buy this train. So we're going to buy this train for $400. And that comes out of the $700 that he started the game with. So, so he really only has $300 left. Man, I, I apologize that I'm bouncing around and forgetting things, but uh, so by us buying this, we denied the AI from getting a train. He still only has these two trains. He's not gonna get anything because there's nothing here. Okay? All right, so it's, uh, now we run trains and then we would finish the round. So we got three companies to run. We're gonna start with him again. He has a four and a three. So looking here, we can see easily a three and then a two. Those are his only two options. So we have 70, 70 plus 40. Actually, he would just do this. So this would be 50. So it's 120 for the first train and then 90 for the second train. So 21 a share for him. And he has 60% ownership. So 21 times 6, he's getting $126. So $126 for him. He's definitely got his $250 now. All right, so now we go to company two, which uh, we'll do our new company here, the, the five train. And technically speaking, uh, his company would move up, right? But we're just gonna move all three of them up because I know I'm paying out, so that's not an issue. Okay, so his five company is, see he's here, so he can go one, two, 
three, four. That's probably, the, no, he can go one, two, three, four, five. He can actually do a five train. So uh, he does not get $50 on that first city. He gets 30 plus 50 for the Y city. Let me get you closer so he can see better. So he gets 30 for this city because that's not his token. And then 50 for the Y city and then 40 for the brown city and then 40 for the green Y city and then 30 for Mildendo. So he gets 190 a share. So at uh, $19 a share, uh, we have five shares of that. We get $95. So I'm taking $100 for me and giving $5 back. Um, the AI doesn't own shares of that. So now we go to um, the yellow company, which is actually the orange one. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have picked two yellow companies here. Um, but we have a three train and a four train. So we can do one, two, three, and then one, two, three. But remember, our four train can't go back to Mildendo again. So, um, well, hold on. Yes, it can. You just can't hit the same place twice in, in one train. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I, if I explained that wrong the first time, my apologies. I can hit this with my four train. I can go one, two, three, four, even though this one was a one, two, three, because it's two different trains. I just can't, with the same train, come out of here and come back. That's what I couldn't do, which is what I did that one time. So my apologies there. So $80 plus uh, this one up here is 50 for one train, okay? Uh, that's 130 and then I'm going to start at that Y city up there for 50 plus 40 plus 40 plus 30 for the four train. We have 29 a share and I happen to have six shares of that. So I get $174 and I'm going to take 175 and there still is a dollar that I can take away. So I'll move this over. I just got 175. And then uh, the AI gets uh, 29 times two, $58. So I'm gonna give him 60 and take two bucks away. All right, so uh, that ends the round. And now we move the round marker up and we only have, uh, basically, we're three rounds left. So we're starting round six. Um, <laughs> before I forget, this moves down. That doesn't change anything, because we're already brown. Um, so now it's to us, and we have to look at our money situation. Can we start another company? And my answer is no, I don't want to start another company. So let's... Let's just do our action. So I have, again, I don't want to buy a share. So I think I want to lay a track and lay a track. That's what I want to do. I want to lay track twice. And I think I want to do the yellow and green and then maybe a brown. So let's figure this out. Now, the one thing that's interesting is, is I can't upgrade this. But a $50 value is just as good as that brown. So and there's no complaints there. It's not as good for my new company, but it's... It's totally fine else otherwise. The other thing is, is I have access through his area, but this Y city is gonna be permanently green. Now granted, a green Y city is just as good as a brown one of those. So don't, you know, there's no reason to whine or complain too much about that. Um, so I think I wanna do a yellow and a green. So, uh, <coughs> so this, I wanna do yellow and green. And then I get uh, a yellow, green, or brown. Uh, or that or I can do two browns. Let me think about this. Um, I need more stops on my route. So that's the key thing I want. This one will help my old company if I go that way, but my new company can't go through here. So I'm thinking of going through here and adding more routes 
which will actually help the AI, but it helps me too. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna add a yellow here, knowing full well that the AI will upgrade that to green. Well, no it won't, but I'm doing a yellow there, then I get to do a green with my yellow, so maybe I'll be the one. I'll upgrade it myself. So I'm gonna upgrade it like so. And then uh, I'm gonna do a brown. And actually there's no brown to do. So maybe I should do another yellow. Because I can't upgrade that. So what is the best option? What I can do is just add another one there. And that might be what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to add a Y city here because I get to lay them for free with my, uh, my ability. So if I add a Y city, then that just added another $30, which isn't bad at all, even though I just added a Y city over there and made it green. Um, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Sorry for the rambling. So I laid track with both of my actions. So now it is his turn. So go back to his AI. He's going to upgrade a green city to a brown city. And it says that only tiles with a station token are upgraded. First the home track, home station, and then one of the other two tiles. So um, he doesn't have a station token uh, anywhere. So he's going to move to the next one. Upgrade a yellow city to a green. Again, he needs a station. Build a yellow city tile. He can do that. Uh, so then uh, it's a question of the straight is a 1-2. So he's going to do a straight like this. OK, so he built a yellow city tile. And per the rules, he's immediately putting a token on it. So that's done. Uh, yep, lay station marker. And then he's going to add additional track. So a one, two for a straight. So I got a four. And then a one, two for this direction, orientation. I got a three. So he's going to do this one. And I'm sorry, here, a little out of. So he's doing that. So that's what he laid. And then he's going to try to buy a share. Uh, remember, he won't buy a share unless it's a new company, which he's going to do. And he's going to spend everything he's got. So 100, 200, 300, 50, 60, 75, 6, 7, 8. So 378. divided by five is a $75 company. So we're just gonna grab, uh, since he has the boot company, he's gonna buy the other boot company. So, uh, so now he has this company and we'll figure out, I'll show you the rules for where to place this in a second. And then he gets the 50% share of that, which is this. So I'm going to hand that to him. And I need to find a boot. So it's $75. He's actually starting it down here. Right there. Um, it still moves just like everything else, just stays on the bottom row. Okay, <clears throat> so the AI rules for this new company is that uh, he doesn't get these other two station tiles. He's only going to get one and only one station tile. And he's going to place it, place the home token of his new company on the home track tile of his first company, if there is a space available. So he's actually going to put it here, which blocks us off from coming through or going to there. So that's fine, but that's what he did. Okay, so um, now train buying, he does get a train, 
And this five train doesn't go to his blue company, instead goes to his purple one. And I'm gonna turn it this way, just so we don't confuse who, who owns what. Okay, so then we move on to run the trains. So let's start with him first. He has a three and a four for his blue company. So uh, he can do one, two, three, and one, two, three. So he can get two threes in. Uh, or he could do a one, two, three, four and a, on the two. But the point is, is that he can get three threes. You know, in some of this AI stuff, when you guys play this game, I'm starting to get to a point where I may trump whatever he rolls and just say I'm connecting to here. Because he could have done this with a three. You know, like if he upgrades this and makes it point this way instead of that way, I mean, he's hurting himself. Uh, I'm not so sure I'm excited about the randomness of it. I, I think sometimes maybe you may want to just make it a little harder on yourself and just help him out a little. But uh, anyways, um, this is seven, nine dollars. So he gets nine for that. And then he's going to get, um, he can't reuse the same track twice. So he has to start here uh, for 40 plus 40 plus 40 because he's going to go one, two, three. So it's $21 a share for his blue company, and he has six shares, so he just made $126. That's a good good amount of money for him. And I gotta remember to take his money away from him. So it gave him $126. Just putting money away, my apologies. Okay, so now um, his purple company is gonna run and it has a five train. So what's the best one we can do? I think the best we can do is a one, two, three, four, like that. So, um, so that would be 30 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40, which is 150. So at $15 a share times five, he's making $75 from his new company. So we just gave him that money. Okay, so now it's to us. We're gonna run our new company, which has a five train. And we can go one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're getting hurt by this and we're getting hurt by him having that blocked. So that's all we can do. So 30 plus 50 plus 40 plus 40. So $16 a share times five, we get $80. So $80. And then we're gonna run a three and a four for our other company. So that's a one, two, three, and a one, two, three, four. So 30 plus 50 plus 20, plus 50, plus 50, plus 40, plus 40, equals 28 a share. That's almost as good as last time. So 28 times six for us is 168. 150, 60. So 168 for us. So our stack gets big. But then he has two shares, so 28 times two is 56 for him. The good news with him is he's just stacking up money now. He's not spending anymore the rest of the game. And then for us, uh, we have stuff to do. So everything moves up, and this moves up, and this 3D comes out. So let's make sure I play the rules correctly and melt the right thing. So the 3D came out, so the three trains now flip over. So this three train is now crippled, or half value, whatever way you wanna refer to it. Um, and then same with his three train over here. And our train limit is two. And it's been that way since the five train. 
So, um, so we can't even buy a new train with this guy. Uh, it doesn't matter. He only has 10 bucks. So, um, let's go to our two actions. Uh, a three train is $500. I don't have $500, uh, here, but I think I'm going to buy a new share. So that's my first action. And then my second action is I think I'm going to do the yellow plus green again. So, uh, those will be my two. Yeah, because when I start a new company, I can buy that 3D train. So uh, that's a free thing to do. So let's see how much money we have and what can we do. So hmm. 300, 400, 500, 25, 35, 45, 55, 58. So 558 divided by 5. We can start a company for $110. So I need $550. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 500, 25, 35, 45. So that's everything. But that was still worth it. So I start a company for 550. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab uh, this black company here. And I'll just set it up here. And I do get all the tokens for it. Wherever they went. Oh, here they are. So this would be the starting spot. And then we're starting at 110. So we're going to be worth more than all the other companies in the game. Now, starting at $110 means that I'm going to actually have uh, $1,100. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this is a thousand one hundred dollars, but we're buying this train for five hundred. So I'm just going to take the five hundred out of it right now. So one, two, three, four, five. So there should be six hundred left for the company, and there it is. So, so I'm going to just put the money on top of the train. So there you can just see the money's on top of the train. Since it's a permanent, it won't be going away anytime soon. And so I uh, have enough money to buy yet another train if I wanted. Um, that's an interesting proposition. So here's my dilemma. If I put my token here, I'm blocking my, my company. I don't want to do that. And now that I know the AI rules, I know he's never going to block me. So I want to leave that open. So I think the best choice for me is to go here with my new company. And so then I'll have the freedom to come in this way if I need to. Uh, so then the question becomes is, obviously I did this action, right? I, um, I bought a share. So what do I want to do with my second action? I can lay more track which then can expand, you know, where he can go and collect revenue from. Or I can buy a train. And what I can do is I can buy a 3D train for 500. But I think, see, see this 4D train is worth 650. He has 600. It's not quite enough to buy a 4D. But he can buy another 3D. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to just buy the second 3D train and give it to my black company. So I now have two 3D trains. And pay that money. Now, one thing uh, maybe some of you have been thinking, I can actually cross buy. So this company can buy one of those 3Ds from him and give him the $300. It still doesn't help because I need 650. But this company could cross by and buy one of those 3D trains from him. Obviously, he only has $10, so 
I would be hurting the black company to help this company, but I can do that, especially when this rusts. That's the key thing, that has to rust. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, it's his turn, and it says that he's gonna upgrade to brown. He can't, but he can upgrade to green, so he will do that. So, um, like I was telling you, I think this is the smart move, but this is a one, two, the other way is a three, four. All right, so I rolled the smart move. Okay, and uh, what does he do next? He's gonna lay a station marker. Nope, he has none left. Additional track. Nope, no additional track necessary. Uh, he can't buy any more shares, and there's no train for him to buy. So we're gonna run shares. Uh, and the reason there's no train for him to buy is he buys from here. So, um, so off we go, and we're gonna start with his blue company which, as you can see, has a four and a half three. So, for the best route, he can go one, two, three, four. And he wants to do that because um, the four train pays full value. And then for his three, he'll do one, two, three. So, uh, let's start with the three train. It's um, 40 plus 30 plus 30, which is 100, but then you divide that by two because he only gets half value. So he only made $50 off the three train, but then the four train is a full 30 plus 40 plus 40 plus 50, so it's still $21 a share. And 21 times six, he gets 126 bucks. So 126 for him. Okay, so now we go to his purple company, which has a five train. So his purple company uh, can do one, two, three, four, or four, so he'll at least go up to there. He still can't do a five route, at least not to my knowledge. Oh yeah, he can, actually he can. He can go one, two, three, four, five. Actually, that's brilliant. So 30 plus 30 plus 40, plus 40 plus 50 is 19 a share. So at 19 a share, he has five shares, he gets 95 bucks. So I'm gonna pay him 100, take back five. All right, so now it's to us. We have Oh, I forgot, I just realized, I forgot to take the 50% uh, share of my company here. Okay, so uh, we have the black company, and then of course we have the orange and the yellow. So let's start with yellow. Yellow has, as you can see, a half three and a four. So the half three is gonna be one, two, three, and then the four is gonna be one, two, three, and then pick whatever Y city you want. So 30 plus 50 plus 30 is 110, but we have to divide it by two for 55. And then we're gonna add 50 plus 50 plus 40 plus 40. So 235, so 23 and a half dollars a share for yellow. And we have six shares, so we get 141. 25, 35, 41 for us. And then he has two shares of that, so he gets 47. So I'm gonna give him a 50 and take $3 from him. All right, so now um, we have our our uh, orange company that has a five train. So we can do one, two, three, four. That's the best we can do. Um, so that's 30 plus 50 plus 40 plus 40. That's 16 a share. So 16 times five, uh, we get $80.
All right, so now we're on our black company, which has two 3D trains, and unfortunately, he can only do one of them. So one, two, three, um, but we get to double them. So it's 100 plus 80 plus 80, which is 260. So $26 a share times five is 130 bucks for us. So we get 130 bucks. All right, so everything goes up. One, one, and one. Now, I mentioned that I would like to buy another company. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I mean, I guess I can, but it's just not, I don't have that much money. Uh, one, two, well, let me, before I forget, we're on the final round, and everything pays double this round. So uh, this comes out, the 4D comes out. So we got to melt things. So the 4D causes uh, the 4s to become half value, and it causes the threes to melt out of the game. So our starting company only has a crippled train. Uh, the other, uh, he loses his three and he becomes crippled for his starting, and then of course that's available for purchase. Here's the thing, it's the last round of the game. If I start a new company, he does get to run this round, um, but I was just calculating. I don't think I have that much money. 50. I mean, that's $300 and 50. So I'd be able to start a $70 company, which would be able to buy that train. That's a very interesting concept. But that's one of my two actions. Um, <laughs> it's so funny, but I think I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy, going to buy a share and I'm going to start another company. So one, two, 300, 25, 35, 45, 50. That gives me a $70 share. So I will start the last available company, which is this one. It's the Acorn Company. And grab a 50% share. So now I'm at my five share limit. And I'm not gonna bother grabbing all of his uh, tile or his tokens. We only need two. One to go on the stock board and one to go on the game. So, um, Unfortunately, I am blocking my other companies in doing this, but uh, you know what I can do? I can actually lay the track first and then do it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do this action first, yellow plus green, and then I will buy the share, okay? So we're gonna do it in a little bit of different order. So I'm just gonna set that aside first and let me get rid of this $350. And, um, so the company would get $700, as you know. I'm not even going to bother giving the company money. This is the last round of the game. So I am, however, going to buy that train that's available, this 4D. So this 4D is going to go to the company. And the company, uh, by the way, would start with $700, pay $650. I mean, I, I'll give it the money just for your rules sake, for playthrough sake. He would have 50 bucks. Okay, so um, the thing is, as I said, I was going to lay this track first. And the reason I'm going to do it is I don't want this city to be blocked. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay uh, a yellow track and then a Y. And we're going to just make it a $30 Y city so it's at least worth something. And then we're going to put him there. Yeah, this is the last round of the game. So I don't need to worry... Uh, like, it's not like I can lay more track. It's not like more stuff is going to be done. That's the best I'm going to be able to do for my companies. So uh, those are my two actions. So now his action is, is he has a token here, so he's going to upgrade this city here. So his is real easy. He's doing this, and then um, uh, per the rules, he would lay one of these. I'm not even going to bother rolling the dice because it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just going to go to a dead end. So... But that's what he would do. 
and uh, he doesn't buy any shares. He's not going to get a new train because we keep taking it from him, and uh, and that's it. So now we uh, do the operating round. So we'll start with him like we've been doing. His blue boot is at half price four train. Okay. So <clears throat> the good news is he can do a four train one two three and then four. So that part's good. Uh, the bad part is it's half price. So. And in fact, he doesn't want to do this anymore. We're going to not do that. He's going to do one, two, three, four. So 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 50 is 170. And then divide that by two, he's going to get 85. So that's $8.50 a share. So 8.5 times six shares, he's getting $51 with his company. So... 51 for him. So now he's got his purple boot company, which has a five train. And if I look here, I can see one, two, three, four, and he can make this or this a five, but this one's worth more. So he's gonna start here for one, two, three, four, five. So what I did actually benefits him too, but uh, 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 30. So that's $19 a share. And before I continue, I'm taking another $51 because this is double pay. The very last round of the game, everything pays double. So uh, so that's $190, and then I'm going to multiply it by 2. So it's actually $38 a share times 5. He gets $190. So I'm giving him $200. Taking ten dollars back, which wasn't a good idea because he didn't actually have ten, so I'm making more change than I needed to. But okay, so that's his companies. So now we're gonna do ours. So let's start um, with the yellow, our starter company. There, we're at half price. So we can do one, two, three, four, right? Uh, we don't want to do the thirty dollar city anymore. So fifty plus 50 plus 40 plus 40 is 180. And then we're gonna, you would divide that by two, right? Because it's a half price company, but we're gonna multiply it by two because it's the final round. So it's $18 a share and we have six shares. So we get $108. So I'm gonna take 110, put $2 back. So that's our money situation right now. And then he has two shares, so uh, 18 times, it should be 36 bucks, yep. So 25, 35, 36 bucks. His stack of doom is growing. Okay, um, now we have, let's go to our, this orange company here. We have a five train. So uh, we can do one, two, three, four. That's the best we can, no. We can do one, two, three, four, five. We can actually do five, because we can start at $30, then go to 50, and then 40, and then 40, and then finish at 30. So that's $19 a share, but I have to multiply it by two. So $38 a share for our orange company. We have five shares. We get $200, or we get 190, but I'm taking 200 and putting 10 back. Okay, and then uh, moving on, we still have two more companies. We have the black company up there, which you can see has two 3D trains, which is crazy because I bought those trains, but it's not doing me any good. Um, I think I could have done a cross buy, and I probably should have, because this, uh, this train purchase lets me, well, I didn't do the train purchase action, so never mind. Uh, that's why I couldn't do the cross buy. So I have two 3D trains, so I can do one, two, and then one, two, three. That's the best I can do. So, so really it's a, for, the, for the, this, these two trains, you can see it's $70 times two. So it's $140 plus uh, 80 plus 80 plus 100, because I'm, Everything is 3D. 
So that's 400 total dollars, but then I get to multiply it by two because it's the last round. So that's $800, so $80 a share times five, we're getting $400 for the black company. So I'm taking $400. And then uh, we go to the Acorn Company, and the Acorn Company has a 4D. So uh, this one's simpler because he only has one train, so it's gonna be one, two, three, four. And again, they're all doubled. So it's 60 plus 80 plus 80 plus 100. That's 320. And then I get to multiply it by two for the last round. That's $64 a share times five shares. I get 320. Okay. So uh, everything goes up. And I'm going to just put my camera like this for now. The game is basically near its end, so everything moves up. And let me just check the AI rules to see if there's anything for game end that's specific to solo. Otherwise, uh, we just add up our scores. Yeah, okay. So uh, I'm gonna get rid of all the company money so I don't accidentally mix it in with anything else. So all the company money is off the table. Remember, the name of the game was to have most personal money, so company money doesn't do squat for you. So uh, that's why we're getting rid of it all. So uh, let's start with him. Uh, let's count up his cash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fifty, eight, fifty-six. Okay, so uh, especially when I'm tired, I don't like uh, having to remember everything. So I'm going to. I don't want to use, I, I borrowed the game. They actually have a score sheet that comes with the game, but I don't want to, I don't want to use up their paper since it's, I don't own it. Okay, so, uh, whatever his name is, was 856 cash. All right, so that's his cash. And then we gotta do the stock value. So you can see uh, where everything is. So he has two shares of yellow, which is worth 110. So 110 times two for him. Plus um, he has six shares of blue, also at 110, plus six times 110, plus he has purple, five shares at 105. So that's worth 1,405. That's his stock. And then we add the two together. He's at 2,261. That's his score. Okay, so I'm gonna set his money aside. And now it's our turn. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one thousand twenty-seven. One thousand twenty-seven. That's our cash. And then we have six shares of yellow. That's at one ten plus. Five shares of orange at 110, plus five shares of black at 135, plus five shares of acorn at 80. That's 22.85 in stock and uh, We crushed him. 
at 33.12. So there you have it. That's a solo game. My apologies for uh, getting some things out of order or for getting some steps along the way there, but um, that should give you a really good overview of how to play. Uh, a couple of things. This game was too easy. So the solo play is not much of a challenge if you're used to 18xx games and if you do the kind of strategy I just did. Way too easy. So uh, uh, my first recommendation, first and foremost, is you're supposed to randomly uh, place, you know, you're supposed to randomly roll for the orientation uh, baloney. Give him the best orientation to make him the most money. Period. Uh, don't die roll or randomize it. Now, if you're new to 18xx games, then by all means, do it the way the rules say, because I make it look easy, but trust me, you have to have experience with 18xx games to do what I just did. Um, you could potentially, you know, have your butt handed to you if you don't. The second thing is, uh, if you notice, I was exploiting starting a new company to steal this train from him. So did you notice he wasn't getting any trains? For the last three rounds, I denied him of a new train. I think that that made the game too easy. And so there's a part of me that thinks, uh, I don't know, you either have to limit how many new companies you can start. Since he only starts one other new company, then you also can only start one other new company. I think that would make it more challenging. Because if you saw, I was, I'm dominating because I have 15 shares here. And he only had you know, 10 shares. And, uh, well, actually I had 20 shares and he had 10 plus, you know, two more. So he had 12 shares, I had 21. That, in any 18xx game, is a win for me, having 21 shares. So um, the extra companies uh, made it too easy. So I think if you limit yourself to having only one extra company, just like he can only get one extra company, that might make this game more challenging. Um, in fact, that might actually be the trick. Because uh, if I didn't have this Acorn company, you know, with the 4D and that other company, uh, he would have gotten the 4Ds and, and, and he would have been able to buy some of these trains and that would have given him more revenue. So I totally recommend that you limit yourself to only being able to start one more company. Now, that doesn't mean though, like from my perspective, if I'm only gonna start one more company, I'm gonna make sure it's a really nice price Gucci company, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, just hoard your money until you get there and I'm fine with that. I, but that's, that's my recommendation. And this is 18 Lilliput, solo, uh, way too easy, not a challenge at all. So uh, uh, I think if you do those things, it would become a challenge though. So I don't know if I'm gonna have this game long enough to try it a second time, uh, but I might do that. It's a fun game. Uh, the solitaire is easy. I think the multiplayer is very tight. Um, in fact, uh, it's very challenging, the multiplayer, because other players aren't gonna let you do the shenanigans I was doing here. No way, they're gonna block, token block you and all kinds of stuff. So um, anyways, that's uh, 18 Lilliput. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, I'm sorry I had a few things out of order along the way, because uh, I've only played this once before, but uh, that's the game. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay awesome.